The loss of the jungles has consequences beyond land biodiversity, affecting the very pillars of life on Earth. Because the jungle is responsible for the equatorial rains and their existence directly affects the water, the climate, and the atmosphere of the Earth. And nonetheless, man stupidly and blindly continues to destroy his benefactor. In the countries of Southeast Asia, the logging companies destroy the forest in search of tropical woods. In Central America and the Amazon basin, it is the cattle breeders in search of pasture that burn and cut down the jungles. But the greatest problem are the farmers living in poverty. 200 million people burn and cut down the forests in search of land for cultivation. Without agricultural techniques, the land gives one or two crops and is then useless. Then the tropical rains, without the natural contention of the jungle, carry the soil off. And what was once a paradise of biodiversity becomes a desert impossible to ever regain. There are places in the world where the evolution of species followed independent paths, giving rise to unique species, endemisms linked to an exclusive habitat that set out on a solitary journey with an island when they separated from the continents, or reached its coasts on floating islands over the course of the centuries. Madagascar is one of these places. When Madagascar separated from the African continent 165 million years ago, the species that undertook this solitary journey became independent from the rest of the world. None of them had any contact with the new species that arose by a natural selection and competition between the inhabitants of the rest of the world. Madagascar separated from the world and its passengers lived a happy retreat from brutal selective competition. Today the descendants of those in voluntary shipwrecks have given rise to extraordinary beings, animals and plants that are completely different from those of the rest of the planet. These Madagascan species, biological treasures that can teach us the basic models of a different evolution, have made Madagascar a treasure of biodiversity, a natural wealth of incalculable importance. But the same singularity that makes the island so valuable has also made it an incredibly fragile place. Here, every niche, every small exclusive world, be it a tree, a patch of ground, or the interior of a plant may contain species that exist nowhere else on Earth. And Madagascar, more than any other place on Earth, demonstrates the intricate dependency of all the members of each ecosystem a dependency that makes each and every species vital.
Deforestation is problematical in the whole world, but in Madagascar the loss of the jungles is an irreversible tragedy. No other jungle can replace the species that are lost on this island laboratory. Each animal, each plant, is a unique experiment of an evolution that did not follow the models of the rest of the planet. In Madagascar, natural selection played by other rules, with its own predators and its own prey. For the Limos, a group of proto-simians exclusive to this island laboratory, the only natural danger is an equally exclusive hunter, a fossa, an agile carnivore endemic to Madagascar. Hunters and prey arose from the balance of the same evolutionary process, a process that required millions of years to achieve the miracle of a different world in which life and death came together, sustained each other and became mutually vital, permitting their continuity. The arrival of man in Madagascar 2,000 years ago threw dark shadows over a world forbidden to outsiders, and the balance of millions of years collapsed. Many species have become nocturnal in a final desperate attempt to survive. Today, all of them are threatened by man. Since our arrival, half of the Madagascan jungles have disappeared and at least two dozen large animal species have been extinguished with them forever. The islands of independent evolution are thus fragile worlds, threatened by our species. And Madagascar is by no means the largest of them.